to the Italian Football Podcast. A team that doesn't look structurally very sound at all at the moment is is Jose Mourinho's Roma. They've had a terrible start to the season. They've got one point in three games. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll go into a little bit more detail of the game itself. But I think the big question right now is, is this another case of third season syndrome for Mourinho? Is this the beginning of the end for Mourinho? Are we starting to see the first signs of of that you know Mourinho meltdown that we've seen so many times before? We've seen it... Chelsea, uh, both spells at Chelsea. We saw it at Manchester United. We saw it at Real Madrid. You know that in his third season, it's either he falls out with players, the press, the club, and or there are bad results. Um, you know that has been the common theme throughout most of his most of his uh, career. You know that the manager, the, the famous quote from from the the the, the legendary Benfica coach Be- Bella Gutman from the sixties: "The third season is fatal." A coach was very similar to. To, uh, to 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 Mourinho and that he always seemed to leave in, the, in his third season or things used to fall apart in his third season. This has been Mourinho throughout his career, really. The third season, things have started to go wrong or he's lost his job. Are we at that situation now with, with, with not necessarily at the end of that situation, but are we at the beginning of the end? I'm not, we- I'm, 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 I think it's too premature to say that. And I'll tell you why. Because Romelu Lukaku, when he came on, he gave Roma a balance and clarity and structure that I don't think Roma had uh, before that. And I think it's unfair a little bit given where Roma have been and how quickly he came and and, and the problems they've had. I think let's wait. But yes, he is on an expiring contract. Yes, Antonio Conte is available. Um, Romelu Lukaku is there. Paolo Dybala is there. Um, Spinazzola, wing backs are there. I mean, they, this does Antonio Conte would be able to to work at this Roma. Um, so I think we should. Uh, so you know that that is something to stick a pin in and think of in the background. But I don't think we're quite there at the Mourinho meltdown stage that we saw. I think really the worst case of at Chelsea, um, and 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 of course Manchester United famously. Um, but I don't. I don't think we're quite there yet. But look, this is what happens if you don't give Mourinho, to use an Italian phrase, a project to marry, and his contract is an expi- He's on an ex- expiring contract. Oh, well, this is what happens. He has an ego as well. And I mean, there are reports that he went berserk at his players at yeah. full time in the changing rooms, and and that. But for the first time, some players stood up to him and, and actually criticised him yeah, for, for the his tactics. tactics. And then and then he refused to to speak to the press after the game after the game too. And we know already that, you know, his blood has been boiling for a while because of the suspension at the start of the season. Um, he felt that Roma are treated differently to other clubs, both in Italy and in and in Europe. He, he quit obviously the UEFA role. You have got the FFP um, situation and you've got also obviously this ridiculous situation with the transfer market where Basically, Roma couldn't spend a single penny of some of the basically the whole transfer. Which is not Roma's Roma. fault. And I think Mourinho needs to understand that. This is not Roma's fault. Roma have a settlement agreement they have to respect and they had to turn a profit. There's nothing they can do. Um, and I, I still think that given those parameters, they did, they had the best Mercato. I gave them an a, a eight and an eight and a half. If you take everything into consideration, I saw some people online that understand how we could do that. And it's like, well, it, we look at the whole picture. Uh, it's not just, you know, any idiot with barely opposable thumbs and sentient mind can sit there and say, player A in, player B out, this is the great. No. If you have to analyze the entire situation, you have to understand the situation. And 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 to me, I think, more, you know, you need to give this a little bit more time. I think the players that they brought in are really ex- exciting players. I think they suit the system. I think Romelu Lukaku and Dybala and Pellegrini are going to have lots and lots and lots of fun together. Uh, after the international break, starting after the international break. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I think we have to look, let's all wait for Lukaku and Dybala to come back and let's mm. see how Roma start playing when when those two together, because those two are going to score a lot of goals. They're going to be a, a <laughs> yeah. great little link up. And in fact, we saw Lukaku. I thought, you know what? I thought Lukaku, even though he's probably about 30%, fit, I thought he was fantastic when he came on. I, I really did. He held I everything, everything stuck to him. He held everything up, even hopeless long balls, brought others into play. He had a shot that just went over. Um, he totally changed the game. I mean, obviously yeah. the red card did as well, but he, he, Roma started, you know, started 
causing a bit of trouble when he when he came on. So you put Dybala in there as well, uh, Awa. Um, but I I do think that you know tactically though I think you know if it's true about them them criticizing Mourinho for his his tactics I think tactically we saw a difference between and this is something I speak about a lot on this pod we saw a difference between a modern interpretation of football of Pioli with the kind of the high press the intensity the inverted fullbacks the flexible tactics against the a more outdated rigid tactics where everybody stays in their position you know which is Mourinho football uh, and this is kind of, this is why I said back in 2016 2015 actually when he lost his job at Chelsea the second time I said that Mourinho back then I said Mourinho at the top level is that's it for him at the top level in terms of a top club mm-hmm. uh, and you know everything that we've seen since then has shown that to be the case and I think that you know we still see that he can still you know we're not saying I'm not saying he's he hasn't got a role. This isn't still a place for him in football at a certain level. You know, he's won. He got to two. He's got to two finals in a row. But that very, very top level, you know, we saw the difference in this game. And I and I think that that I think that that is an issue. And what I also think is an issue for Roma, a big, big issue, is we can talk about yes, when Lukaku and Dybala come back, they're going to be great. But are they going to? Be, how many games are they going to play together? Because this is a huge problem with Roma. They've got too many injury prone players and some of this is down to the club we know Roma have got a long record of of injury issues but some of this is just down to actually the players that they have signed are injury prone players now anybody can look at Dybala Awa and Renato Sanchez's injury records in the last three to four years just go and look it up yourself google it it speaks for itself these are incredibly injury prone players now Dybala's injured at the moment Awa went off injured in this game Sanchez was was uh, missed the game through injury. I mean, this is a huge problem for Roma. We can sit there and say, oh, they've had a fantastic market. When they get everyone back, they're going to be fantastic. But are they? How going often to are they going to have them? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's a very valid point. I think that's a very, very valid point. Um, and I think it's we shouldn't, you know, um, underestimate that uh, because the quality mm-hmm. that those injured players have are, you know, Dybala, Awa, Sanchez. That. <laughs> And to a certain extent, Romelu Lukaku now too. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's 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 a good point. It's a really good. Point. The other the, the other thing I want to mention again is we we already spoke about this on the pod last uh, last week as well is Rui Patish, Patricio the goalkeeper and he's Mike so Pension. bad. I want to talk about that penalty situation. What is he doing? There's no yeah. doubt in my mind that you know. There, there was an exaggeration, but his foot has no no business being up there. What is he doing? Yeah, it's just what I said. He just makes so many mistakes. He makes so many mistakes, unforced errors. And, and that is so stupid. Why? why? I yeah. don't get it. I don't no, get this it. This is it. He's costing Roma so many goals. He's costing them so many goals. Um, he's cost them the first goal in this game. He cost them the first goal in the in the game before. I mean, you know, when the game's nil nil, these got these, these this makes the difference in matches. Uh, and this is this was the one biggest failure from the transfer market that they didn't replace. They need to position. replace this man. They need to replace him as soon as possible to because I, Jews, I, he made one fantastic save from he Pulisic, did. but he did. But by then he'd already put them. They're already a goal behind. <laughs> by then, no, 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 you know, and also the Roma defense has been a disaster this season. Really has been. They've conceded six goals already in three games. And I have to say, um, it doesn't help when you've got Paredes protecting the defence. We're going to talk about Fiorentina afterwards as well, because I think this is a problem for Fiorentina. But when, you're, when your regista is so weak defensively, it really does put pressure on your, on your defence. Uh, and I think this is a problem. This is a problem parade, with Paredes throughout his career. And um, yeah, I think, again, we saw it in this game. No, well, it's silly. Silly. Uh, I just don't. <sighs> that they, they've they've strengthened in attack in midfield. I think they did the right thing getting rid of Roger Ibanez. And if you want, you know, new data I, as to why that is, then please go and check out the Roger Ibanez highlights in Saudi Arabia. And once your eyes stop bleeding, um, then then you'll understand. You know, reflect on why I cannot stand that man. They need to. They need to. Ref, they need to. You know. They, they, we have to wait and see what Indica can do, but um, they need to, they need to sign defenders. There's no doubt about it. It's, it's as simple yeah, as that. Absolutely.